hi guys welcome back to ifashi on today's video i'll be showing you guys how to make this stylish pants trouser with front slits and buttons so guys the first thing we're going to do is to bring out our pattern paper and then the materials i'll be using the rule, straight ruler the curve ruler my pencil and the markers it is advisable to use a pencil for your pattern drafting so that whenever you make a mistake you can just easily clean it off but i'll be using these two markers because i want it to be visible enough for you guys to see the first thing i'll do now is to take 1.5 inches from the top line and mark it my waistline which is where i'll be taking all of my measurements downwards after taking that straight line on the waistline I'll come down by 11. This 11 will serve as my crotch depth. How did I get that 11 as crotch depth? I divided my hip by 4. My hip is 44. 44 divided by 4 will give us 11. So I marked that straight line and labeled it C, which, is, which will serve as our crotch depth. The next thing I'll do is to go upwards from that crotch depth by 2 inches to mark out my hip line. And then I'll mark it out and label H. After doing that, the next thing we're going to take now is our knee length. My side waist to knee length measurement is 25. So I'll place my tape on my waist measurement and mark 25 inches downwards. And then I'll rule that out and label it K, which is my knee. The next one we're going to take is my full length, my ankle and full length measurement. Pardon me, the camera did not cover the length of this trouser, but I'll show it later. I marked 42 for my ankle and 44 for my full length and then I added 2 inches for folding allowance. After marking out these 3 lines, I labeled them A for ankle, then the length for my full length and then the folding allowance was the last line. So now we have all the lines we need for this pant trouser. The next we're going to take now is our crotch the curve on our crotch so the first thing i'll do is to take my hip measurement on that crotch line after marking my hip measurement i also mark the same hip measurement on my hip line as well and then i'll mark a straight line from my hip measurement down to my waist to get a very straight line also take your hip measurement on your waist so that your line will be very straight then we'll now go ahead and take our crotch curve i'll come out from this straight line i just marked by two 2.2 how did i get 2.2 your hip measurement divided by 20 for front then when you're doing the back you divide your hip measurement by 10. so for this front i divided 44 by 20 that gave me 2.2 and then on the that i marked that 2.2 on the crotch line on the hip line i came out by 0.5 and then i used my curve rule to curve that crotch curve out and that's that for our crotch curve then we will now label this straight line our center front. This is our center front. This is where we will take our waist measurement inwards of the, on this pant. And since that is our center front, we are coming down by 0.5. And then on the side front, you go up by 0.5 and then make a slant rule. That will give your trouser a shape at the front part. So now I'm going to take my waist measurement coming from the center front inwards. My waist measurement is 30 divided by 4. That gave me 7.5. I marked 7.5 and then I added 1 inch allowance for that and then another 1, in, one inch allowance for same allowance. But we don't necessarily need to take our exact waist measurement for this pant. I'm just taking it because this pattern can also serve you for a straight pant. If you want to make a straight pant, this pattern will work for you. So I'm using the pencil to mark out the part that will, that would serve for the straight pant and then I'll use my marker to mark out the part I need for this pant. So I'm taking a dart as well. We don't need dart for this pant because it's, it has elastic on the waist. I'm taking a dart just in case you want to make a straight pant with this pattern as well. So after marking out that dart, I came down to the crotch line to divide what I have on that crotch line by 2. I got 6.5 and then I went to my knee line and, and I impute that 6.5 I got from my crotch depth on that knee line. That will give us our crease line. I also went straight down to my ankle and full length to mark out that 6.5 I got from dividing my crotch by 2. So I used the pencil to mark a straight line down to give us our crease line. You need this crease line when you want to divide the front of this trouser by 2 
to get these button allowances. Even for your straight pants, you need this crease line as well. It serves as the center, coming from the dart, as the center of your pants trouser. So the next thing I'm doing now is I took the circumference, my knee circumference, I took the tight one and I took the flare pant circumference as well because I'll be marking both of them on this pattern to give out to give us the straight pants and the flare pant pattern. So I marked what I got from my, my knee circumference and my ankle circumference. I marked the tight one with a pencil to give us this straight pant, tight pants pattern. And then the wide one I got, I also used my marker to mark it out because that's the one I will be using. I want that one to be visible enough for us to see. I keep my pencil aside now and then the knee circumference I'll be using for this pant is 21. So I divided 21 by 4 and I got 5.25. I just put 5.5, then I put 5.5 left and 5.5 on my right. Then I went to my ankle circumference. I marked 4.5 on the left and on the right. So I used my marker to give us a straight line downwards. And that line will connect our waist to it. Remember, we're not using our exact waist measurement for this pattern because it has elastic on the waist. If you use your exact waist measurement, it will be too tight. If you use your exact waist, just add two inches for your zipper allowance. But if you're doing elastic, remember to add extra two inches. So now, on my ankle length, 4.5, and I connected, I'm connecting my knee to my ankle and to the floor. And we are almost done with this pattern, guys. I label my crease line, that straight line I made in the middle. And then the next thing is to introduce a plain pattern paper to use our tracing wheel to mark out this front piece on the back. But before doing that, we're going to take our band measurement. I just came down by two inches from this waistline and delivered it the band because I'll cut it out by the time I'm cutting to get my elastic waist band. Now this is the plain paper that we'll be using to draft out our back pattern. I will just place this front that we've already drafted, I'll place it on top of this back pattern. While placing on top of it to use the tracing wheel to trace out, do not make it close to the edge. Leave out like three inches on the side and leave out another three inches on top of it because for the back pattern will go up and we also extend to the sides. So I'm tracing out everything I did on this front out on the back before we will start taking our back measurements in order for me not to start afresh. So I'm just using my tracing wheel to trace out here and then we will start taking our back measurements after doing this. I'll first of all use my pencil to mark out everything I just traced out with my tracing wheel from the front. So this pencil will be the front. Then I'll now use my red marker to, be, to start taking the back measurements. All the lines that, that has this pencil are automatically the front measurements. So now that we have used our pencil to mark out the lines that our tracing wheel marked, this is the tracing wheel. I've used pencil to highlight the lines that I marked from the front. So we now have our front pattern again here. I will just label our waist, hip, crotch, the crease line, the knee, the ankle, and every other lines we made earlier in front before we will now start using our marker to do the back measurement. For the back measurement, the first thing we're going to do on this straight line, this straight line we took upwards from the front, we're going to come inwards by one inch on the crotch line I'll mark my one inch there inwards then on the waistline I'll come in by two inches that place I took the two inches I'll go upwards by another two inches and then I'll connect that line to this one inch I just made 
this new line will serve as the crotch line that we'll be taking all our measurements from for the waist we'll take it inwards for the hip we'll take it inwards from that line now we're going to take our crotch extension remember i said for the back we will divide it by 10 for front we divided our hip measurement by 20 and that gave us 2.2 now we just divided our hip measurement by 10 and it gave me 4.4 that's what i took on my crotch depth and then on the hip line i came out by 0 0.5 the same 0 0.5 i came out with for the front i did the same thing for the back and i used my curve rule to mark a curve after that i'll come upwards and take my waist measurement on the waistline i just checked what i have on the front i have 11 so i decided to mark the same 11 from this line i went up by two inches on the other end i'm also going to go up by 0 0.5 you can go up by one inch depends on you but before we do that we're going to extend all these lines remember that's why i said you should leave space by the side so now i went up by one inch on the side and i slanted this line from these two inches from on the center front i slanted it to meet the other one inch i took there now i'll take my hip measurements from remember i said all the measurements will be taken from this straight line i'm just checking what i have in front before then i marked it from this straight line for the back as well and it will now be connected back to the waistline we're having our new the back is coming out gradually so now i'll also take my dart like i did in front so that you can also get your straight tight part pumped from this pattern i'm taking my dart which is four in five inches downwards and then 0 0.5 each on both sides i also came down by two inches on the waistline to get my waistband now let's go to the down part of this back we're almost done the back is not very difficult we just need to come out on the sides by one inch on both sides i just added one inch on both the knee and the ankle and the full length and i and i marked it out and that's all for the back very easy very straightforward pant is not difficult guys by the time you draft it once or twice you'll find out that it's very very simple and this pattern that we're doing here gives you a very perfect crotch result we have a pant video on our channel already and a lot of you guys told me how helpful it was and i hope you like this one also if you've watched to this point remember to subscribe and share the video Now that we are done with the drafting, this is the front and the back drafted out. The next thing we will do now is to cut out on our fabric. This is the fabric we will be using. I will take off this back pattern and keep aside and I will tear this front pattern into two on the crease line starting from the dart we took earlier. I will remove the band, the two inches I took for our waistband. I will take it off because we will be cutting another two inches fabric to make our elastic waistband and then i will come connect the, the dart straight down to the crease line that we marked earlier which is the middle of the trouser and i will cut it open in order for us to be able to get that button allowance on the front of this pants and while you are cutting the front of this pants kindly take note guys do not cut your fabric on fold because this style has the buttons on only one leg only one side of the front if you cut on fold you have two fronts that is opened so do not cut on fold and the next thing after placing your pattern on your fabric the next thing you do is to add two inches on the middle of your trouser on the middle of this paper that we just opened up because we are going to gum that part to make our button and buttonhole allowance and after adding your button allowances, I added one inch on the sides for seam allowance and then I cut out. This will serve as one of the legs for front and the next one I'll cut now is the second leg of the front. I'll flip the paper over and then I'll join the papers together. It's even better you cut the other leg that doesn't have buttons first before you tear your paper. It can be done either ways. So now I will keep this aside and bring out another fabric and cut out the second leg when cutting the second leg i flip the paper the other way around so i don't get two fr same fronts and then join the paper together because this one doesn't have buttons the only thing i'll add here is the one inch allowance on the sides and then i'll cut out the second front leg after that i'll also bring out um, the fabric and 
the back pattern unfold the back will be cut on fold so that i'll cut it together and that's that for the cutting When cutting the back, I folded the waistband and then I also added one inch allowance, seam allowance on both sides. Then that's that for the back. The next thing I'm going to do now after doing the whole cutting is to fold in the edges of the pants. I'll fold in the edge of the down part. This down part, I'll fold it in for the back and front. And then this side, the sides that we tore open to get our button look. I also fold it in because I have to fold it in before I come and iron it with our hemming gum. We will hem the down and hem that bottom part as well. So this is what we have after folding. I folded it. The next thing I'll do now is to iron it out with our hemming gum. To fold that part, we'll be putting our button and button holes. Before I folded the buttonholes part with the hemming gum, I first of all introduced the second leg of the front that doesn't have it here. And I placed these other ones that I opened, I placed it on top of it and I ironed out the SS. The two edges are equal. I just want to know what is remaining in the middle and that's what I'll be using for the buttons. So I first of all ironed it out to get exactly what I would need so that one leg will not be bigger than one. So and after that, I now went ahead and gum it with my hemming gum. And after that, this is what we have. It is neatly ironed and ready for the button and button holes. So the next thing I'll do now is to put it together and, and start sewing. I'll introduce the back patterns and the second leg and join and do the joinings of the pants trouser. So after doing all of the arrangements, you know, for you to join your trousers, you introduce one front and one back and join on the hip line, which is the side. So I'll go to the sewing machine and join this front and this back together on the hip part. And then I'll also join the second back and the hip part of the other front. You know, one of the fronts is torn. So I'll take the hip part and join it to the second back and I'll be right back. Now after joining the both hips of one front and one back together, this is what we have. The next thing I will join now is the crotch, both the front and back crotch. I would face the good sides of the fabric facing each other. I would put the back on top of the back and join it on the crotch. This crotch line coming from the waist to down the crotch, I'll join that. And then I'll also take the front, good sides facing each other. Remember one of the fronts is joined already. This other front, the crotch part has not been joined. Now we're going to join it on the crotch part first. So I'll go to the sewing machine and join both front and back crotches and I'll be back. So now this is what we have after joining the front and the back crotches together. The next joining we're going to do now is to join the legs together. For you to join the legs, you're going to start from the crotch. That's the middle of your trouser, where the front and the back crotches meet. 
as you see me join holding together like this the back crotch and the front crotch will be held together like this so that you can join the left leg and the right leg together now when you join it facing each other like this make sure the lines of the front crotch and the back crotch make sure they align and then you would join the legs together make sure these lines align here and then I'll go and join and I'll come back to show you guys now this is what we have after joining the two legs the separate legs this is what we have the lines are aligned the lines on the crotch is aligned so the next thing i'll do now the only open part in this trouser is this front part that will be placing our buttons so i'll secure it down with a pin then i would bring out a fabric that we use for our waist elastic waistband if you don't know how to cut an elastic waistband trouser we have a video of elastic waistband short on our page i'll be tagging the, the link to the video of our elastic waist band in the description box the next thing i'll do now is to fix the elastic waist and gum the hem on the down part of the trouser so i'm just taking the waist measurement to know the length of the waist band i'm cutting I will not cut my exact waist because the rubber will shrink it together so I'll cut SS and then I'll, it's only the rubber that I will cut my exact waist measurement. So I'll cut out, I will need 4 inches so that when I fold it it will give me 2 inches waistband but I'll cut out 5 because I will need 1 inch to sew. So that's what I'm cutting now. The next thing I would introduce my elastic and then I'll go to the sewing machine and make the elastic waistband and I'll be right back to show you guys And after making the elastic waistband, this is what we have, guys. Like I said earlier, I'll be tagging the video on how to make your elastic waistband. I'll be tagging the video in the description box so that you know how I achieved this. You can use this elastic waistband for your joggers, your trousers and shorts. So I'll just go ahead now and join it all round to the waist of this pants. And while joining, I'll make this button part, I'll place it on top of each other and we're almost done. This is what we have after joining our elastic waist to our pants and then the next thing I'll go fix my button and the button holes to the slit part of this pant and then I'll also iron hem the down with the hemming gum and guys we are done. Thank you for watching to this point. Remember to subscribe, remember to like, remember to share this video.